So before the break, uh, we talk about uh, the functional unscalar uh, regression models, and we mentioned that uh, uh, to we want to have some uh, smooth controls on the functional coefficient beta of t, right? Uh, to help us to interpret the results and uh, help to um, make the estimation more stable. So, uh, so to control the smoothness of beta of t, uh, we will add a roughness penalty as we used uh, uh, be, as we do before, right? So here we will add a, a roughness penalty on the beta of t. So, uh, so you can use any uh, differential operator L to uh, to penalize the the roughness on the beta beta j of t. So generally, we were using the second derivative to define to to define this roughness penalty. But uh, if your beta j of t is a periodic, then we recommend using the uh, harmonic acceleration differential operator to estimate uh, the uh, to define this uh, uh, LJ here. Okay. Um, so after we add in this reference penalty, you can. Uh, if L is a, is a linear differential operator, you can uh, express this penalty as a quadratic form. So uh, suppose B is a vector of the basic coefficient, and uh, then you can write it as a, a quadratic form B transpose times R times B. And here, this R1 to Rp uh, represents the uh, penalty information on the basic function exactly. So in other words, uh, so this is the definition of Rj of t, Rj, the basic functions, uh, Rj, the, the roughness uh, penalty matrix. So you can see here, um, for given basic functions, if you define the L, for example, as a second derivative, you should be able to calculate the second derivative of the basic functions and then you are able to calculate this Rj, this penalty matrix. So in other words, the R is known. So then, uh, after reading this uh, uh, rough in the penalty term and this quadratic form, then uh, you can find out the estimation for the basic coefficient is this uh, is this uh, in this form, right? So you basically you will add a, a, a penalty matrix. Uh, in this uh, inverse uh, matrix inside, okay. Uh, so here, uh, this uh, uh, lambda lambda one to lambda p represent the smoothing parameter, right? It controls uh, uh, how smooth you want the beta t should be. Um, so to choose the optimal smoothing parameters. Uh, we can use in the new one curve out cross validations. So basically, uh, you will, uh, for example, you will remove uh, y i of t and all the x i j, and then you can estimate the uh, functional coefficient uh, beta hat of t. So here we have a notation minus i means uh, this is the estimation after remove the i's subject. After we got this estimation. You can look at uh, how the prediction um, to the to the i from the i subject. So basically, the prediction will be z i times uh, uh, beta minus i of t, right? And then you can look at uh, this will be the prediction on the i subject. So then you will you can do this for all the n subjects, and then you can sum them together. So this will be the cross validation scores. Okay, um, yeah, uh, so this is the general ideas when you choosing the smoothing parameters using cross validations. Okay, so any, any questions? <coughs>